Quem é não olha, velho? Porque foi barrigote, que é 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 Okay. Acho que é muito um interessante. Olha, ajuda aí, mas é. Ajuda? Deixa eu ver se tem Oh, yeah, you can sit down. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm just waiting. We just got here, viewers. So we're going to wait for uh, wait for him to get here in a minute. And then uh, we're going to ask you some questions. He's, he's living in the United States. Oh, you live in the US? I live in New York, yeah. Oh, nice. Bring New my York. PhD. Yeah. Okay, that's good, man. What part of New York? Uh, I, I have to find an apartment now. Okay, nice. Uh, All right, New York's good though, bro. You're the right place, especially chess-wise too. I'm coming back and uh, got an Airbnb for a week. I need to find an apartment now. Sweet. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be. Special. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I mean, lot. Actually, New York is expensive, so it depends yeah. on where you know. But I wish you the best there too, bro. Yeah. All right, we wait for these people to get here. Chat. Let me know if you're here. Let me know if we live. Let me know. I just put on the Wi-Fi. Let me know who's in the chat, and we gonna have this quick interview. What's your name? Uh, George Ferreira. How George, do you say it? George Ferreira is George. George. George Ferreira. Hater. Uh, but but like uh, the English version would be something like George Ferreira. <laughs> George. Uh, one of my advisors calls me Jorge like uh, Jorge. fifty percent of the time. <laughs> Jorge. It's be, be, George. Because you okay. would you would it. write it, you know. Yeah. Jorge. Every time. Yeah. Jorge, but it's George. But in Portuguese, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna call you George, bro. Exactly. Like the English right. version is totally fine, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, perfect. So it actually just came on. So people will be here in a minute and we're gonna start asking you some questions, George. Big G here. <laughs> Let me ask you one question, James. Okay, what you got? You have you have uh, recorded our interview. I did. Yeah? I did. I got the whole because thing. Because I lost mine. I got the whole thing. Oh yeah, yeah. I, 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 I can uh, I can send it to you. I have to yeah, export yeah. once I get back to the hotel, I gotta like yeah, export yeah, it yeah. and then send it to you. Doesn't, send me a message right now on Twitter so I don't forget. It doesn't need to be today. Oh yeah, course, you just say uh, yeah, I just don't want to forget. So go back to yeah, just Twitter send me amateur stuff. <laughs> <laughs> send, say uh send me a send video and then when okay, I get back okay. I'll send it to you. So I don't forget. So I don't forget. Perfect. You are going to upload it also, no? Yep, I am. There you go. Please send me the interview. Perfect. Got it. Okay, yeah, I'll send that to you. I must put it on YouTube too. Yeah, thanks for that. Because when I cut those things, I think I cut our interview also. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, you might have. Yeah, you right. yeah, might have cut it. Yeah, because it was... Uh... Oh, I'm at a... <laughs> you want me to work in your team, no? <laughs> oh, man. You're right. playing in the tournament, right? I am. Um, I got two out of three. I lost to uh, GM first round, 25-50. I lost to uh, Pepe. Ah, Pepe, right, uh, right, right, right. Quinka. Yeah, Quinka. Yeah, yeah, it was a tough game. It was a King's Indian, sacked a piece. It was right, but it was, I had to play like engine like afterwards, which was not happening. So it was too, it was kind of tough. And then one two, yeah. Yeah, it was a tough. And then round two, I had a, I had two easy games, seventeen and fifteen. I was like, wow, mm -hmm. you know, I got paired down twice, but so because of the accelerated yeah, accelerated system. system, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now you'll be back on the yeah, top Yeah, I'll floor. be back. Exactly. I'll be good. I got white tomorrow, mm -hmm. too, to start. All right, chat. Let's get to it. So we're here with George here. So, all right, George. Let's talk. Let's, let's, uh, let's talk to the chat. So, uh, Grandmaster here. Right. When did you make GM? Uh, 2018. 2018. Nice. All right. Perfect. And uh, what's your rating currently? Uh, uh, 2,500 currently. Ooh, it will be 2,517 in a couple of days. Wow. 2,517 when it hits. Which sounds better. better yeah. <laughs> it sounds a lot better, Chad. I'll see 2,517. <laughs> That's good, 25-17. So, uh, how long have you been playing chess? Uh, since 2005. Wow, 2005. I, I was wow. 11. Okay, 11. And how old are you now? I'm 28. 28, nice. Living in? New York. New yeah. York. Shout out to them. So, people in the chat would like to know what's one of the biggest things that you could... Uh, you can work on for your game actually to become a grandmaster also me too as well basically i'm fm now so for me it for, was, for them and in fm in my story it was 100 percent calculation interesting um i i, I was already 2500 okay. um for a couple of years but i played a tournament a european team championship in, mm -hmm. in greece and looking at my games the calculation was just awful wow. like uh, tactics weren't so bad I, yeah. could, I could see my way through some tactical complications but every time I needed to be precise about things, it was wow. just, it was just like uh, some really big problems. Interesting. I lost a, I lost like a complicated knight, or if I wow. completely lost control of a king's Indian where yeah. I was attacking his king, and then wow. I just couldn't um, be precise enough in the calculation phase. And actually, I think in chess, very often you can improve just by explicitly thinking about 
your problem during the game. Mm -hmm. So like, if you know that you have problems at calculation, you just have, are gonna have to slow down during the game. Right, and really calculate. To, you need to play faster at, at certain points, so then you have time to actually slow down and right. do everything right. very slowly. Okay. You know, you need to know exactly how many lines you're calculating. Mm. Either you took on d7 with a bishop or with a rook. How do you so, work so, on your calculation? Uh, but then I also did some exercises. So there's the Agard book. Oh yes, I have that one. I live by that. No, it's it's, it's a very good one. And now yeah. I just bought um, uh, Ramesh's book. You know. Oh, the, the new one. Indian coach, improve your calculation. Has, I read has a bit. It's so it's, like it? it's tough. I like it. It's 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 rough. It's kind of hard. But um, okay. The thing about calculation is that you don't actually have to get the exercises right. Right. You're actually training a skill. So yeah. if you're doing some tactics, you need the patterns in your head. Right. Right. But if you're doing calculation, because it's more of a, a skill that you need to develop, even if you're there sitting for an hour trying to solve a complicated study, you're getting better. Oh. You're getting better at visualization. Yeah. You're getting better at the discipline of separating lines from each other, right. going through them very slowly. Right. So even if you get it wrong at the end, I think it can really work. Yeah. I, I, I'm saying that because it's easy to get discouraged. You could just get discouraged because you get no, none of none the Kasparian right. studies right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, especially if you're tough with yourself and you look at the solution, it's not just the idea. You actually need to have found the details and stuff. Right. But, but you shouldn't get discouraged, I guess, is the message. That's very good. I actually have yeah. been taught that from Alex Golden. I've been working with him a lot, too. Right. Golden told me that. It's not about actually getting it correct. It's more about you actually doing the work doing it calculating exactly and, and, and then you know getting it right is a bonus in a way which exactly. is pretty good have you heard of a, a book thinking fast and slow i have not heard of that one ever it, it's by a nobel prize winning psychologist wow the nobel prize in economics and it's about when we think as human beings we have yeah. an intuitive way of thinking which is mm -hmm. the thinking fast mm -hmm. and then we have a slow way of thinking like when you solve a math problem yeah you have to think and, and in chess we have both of those ways of thinking right. thinking fast and slow and improving calculation is a lot about knowing how to force yourself to slow down, think slowly, and actually turning off your intuition often. Ooh. Because your intuition, if, like... you, if you take a piece, your intuition wants to take back. Right. If you see a check to your king, it looks scary, your intuition wants to end the line right there. Right. And sometimes when you're calculating, you can't. You actually yeah, need to see right. what's actually happening. Yeah, you know? that's deep. That's good, um, boy. That's fire. I'm actually learning here, too. What's your opening repertoire? White, black. Uh, I, I never had a hope, uh, opening okay. repertoire, but this summer I just wanted to kind of like fix on one. Yeah. And so I, in the, my last two tournaments, I've been playing the English opening as white. Okay. Uh, just, What's your just, style? Do you have a style? Like, it's a very th tough question. Universal, like, uh, uh, um, Have you heard of a book, Foundations of Chess Strategy? I have heard of it, i never read it though. They did the DVD now on chess plays, Karsten Mueller. Okay. I bought the DVD. They have four types of players. Interesting. There's the activist, the pragmatist, the theorist, and the reflector. Wow. Who reflects about chess and stuff. Yeah. And I think I'm a theorist. Okay. I'm also a philosopher. That's where my, what my PhD is, is on. Yeah. So, like, it sounds like I'm a theorist. Yeah. So, basically, it's kind of a positional style, but uh, where you actually want to find a model for the position. I think that's what it comes down to. That's fire. And when I don't know what to do, I'm really bad, basically. That's <laughs> what theorists are, are like. If you read the book, that's what they tell you. Yeah. Okay. But... Uh, I, I was playing the English opening. Um, I was playing a lot of 2600s and, and whatnot. So I was playing the Petrov against e4. Yeah. And I was playing e6 Sicilians e6 when I wanted Sicilians. to play for a win. Timonov, things like that. Timonov and Khan, you have a lot of. Uh, Good What's up, Eric? What's good? We, we're talking to a GM right now, Eric. Get your questions, Chad, if you got questions. And, yeah. uh, and against e4, I was playing mainly, mainly the Queen's Gambit declined. Oh, QGD. Yo, so were you. Uh, I was looking at QGD myself because I actually was making. Uh, uh, I play. I like to play Sicilian, but I'm also like predictable there, so I like playing mm -hmm. French too as well. But uh, against D four well, with D four, uh, Queen's Gambit declined to me as I studied it was very bro, boring. Oh my goodness, bro! Right. So winning wise, how's your uh, how was your it, wins with that? You you can actually do it. Um, so one thing you can always try to do is to put your bishop to B four. Okay. They're doing that all the time now. Interesting. Even in the exchange variations. So yeah, D4, even exchange variations. C four E six, Knight C three, right. Knight F six. Right. Pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop g5, they're playing bishop b4. Wow. And Zneeman lost a game against Van Al Sahab in the wow. Turkish league just yeah. like a couple of days ago. Dang, and that's so, crazy. And so they, they try to do it Ragozin like uh, yeah. to spice it up. Wow. Which is really cool because then your repertoire, you have some more solid lines with bishop yeah. b7, and then you can spice it up if you want to. Right. 
Of course, it's never going to be like a Benoni in terms yeah. of um, in uh, balance. ambition and growth. But but, but but actually, like you said, you... Kings Indian too. So I'm a Kings Indian player, and I'm honestly, man, I'm almost abandoning it because I mean, I lost to uh, to Pepe this round actually, right. oh, first round um, with Kings Indian, and I'm like, I mean, the last games I've had in KID actually have been rough for me. You know, like the Kings Indian, I think. The public perception might be a bit wrong right. because we always associate the Kings Indian with those attacks in right. the Mar del Plata main line. Right. All the pieces are flowing. Kasparov right. is, you know, taking all, Korsh, all of Korchnoi's pieces. Right. Right. But it's never like that. So Yeah, you will never get that position. You, you, you get these closed strategic positions. Yep. Pieces don't breathe. You yep. Know? Yep. And that is actually much it's harder. Tough. So, for, for example, if you compare it with something like the Tarash defense. Yeah, you know, Tarash. Just, might not be the best opening, but right. all your pieces are playing just right. from the beginning. And what do you think of that, actually? I was looking at that from San, uh, Sanya, Gur, uh, Indian GM. Ah, uh, right. Surya. Surya, with, he, he likes the to play. Semi. Yeah, uh, Simi, right, Simi Taraj with Bishop before check. Of course, yeah, we yeah. do have the two pawns versus one on the queen side, it, which is cool, but I mean, it's just, it seems very boring. Like, you get an equal it's position. It's more solid, right? Right, it's more solid. And of course, when you're trying to play for a win, right, like, it's difficult, I think, uh, but, um, sometimes. But with, you, with your style, like I saw some I'm of your videos, Very and aggressive. I saw that you like the Yalapan and I stuff. I love it, yeah. See, and so the Tarash three. might not be bad. Okay. And so if you did the repertoire with... Tarash, so, Nimzo... So D4, D5, C4, E6. Right. If they go Knight, C3, you go C5. Right. And actually against C takes D4. D4. Uh, C, C, C takes D5, you can go C takes D4. Uh, oh, the yeah. The Enix Shara Gambit. And Queen takes a Knight, C6. Knight, C6. Ah. That is actually a pretty interesting Gambit. I've never seen that. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, I have seen it. But... And against Knight, yeah. F3. Okay, let's just say up time. GM, what would you say to me as an aspiring professional chess player? I have zero OTB experience. Chess.com ratings, Blitz 2400, Bullet 2600. That's crazy. I know. He's, like, it's he's pretty nuts how yeah. strong he is. He ain't got no OTB experience. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I played him a lot. He's probably, I mean, at least master strength. Yeah. No, I think playing OTB is really the most important thing, I would say, to someone who's, you know, starting out in the chess scene. Okay. Like, a lot of people have this idea that you should just, you know, close yourself in your house for, like, three months. Right. And really work down your repertoire, your yeah. perfect at tactics and calculation, and then you go and play. Yeah. But that's actually really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, First, it's hard to find motivation if you're not playing. Mm -hmm. And then also, introspection is not very reliable. Yeah. So we don't actually know what we're bad at. Okay. If we're not getting this feedback from your opponents, essentially, that you lose games like this and like yeah. that. And after, you should just play tournaments. You should be ready to lose because your yeah. goal is not having a certain rating next month. It's right. having a certain rating in two years or whatever. Experience. And then you should look at your games critically. And then finding information from that. Ooh, and, uh, and then, and then you he getting this, Eric? You getting this, Eric? Eric, are you getting this? Eric, he giving you knowledge right now. Eric, throw something in the chat for that, bro. Cougar bait. I see you, man. We getting knowledge right now, bro. You got any, any socials that we can follow you on? I Facebook, don't actually. Instagram. I, I am on Facebook. You on Facebook? Uh, okay. Josh Maybe Adam. My name. All right. Yeah. Cool. Instagram. And uh, if you don't have a Twitch or YouTube, <laughs> not yet. No, not no, yet. No. <laughs> I ain't got it yet, chat. The, the, the PhD. Is, ain't got it yet. It's very hard, yeah. I ain't got it. Yeah, he ain't going for a PhD right now. This man is super strong. So, look, I got an aggressive repertoire. Or at least I'm an aggressive player. I'm looking for... I mean, I like Joe Bava London, obviously. Right. But, I mean, should I stick with E4? What do you think? I, I think that, like, uh, if you're an active mm -hmm. positional player, uh, um, <laughs> the, the, main, the, the most important thing is having your pieces have activity Act, and breathing. Active, active. Uh, that's why, that's why really. the Kings Indian, I have my doubts about it. Ah, uh, that's exactly right. I'm never active, really. Because... I mean, it, be, be, when I play, at least. Sense. When Kasparov plays, it's, it's always amazing. exactly right. When I play, you know, it, you know, <laughs> you know like, <laughs> it's sometimes often very strategic. Yeah. And you might like it, obviously. You know, it's interesting right. positions, but it's actually quite closed. You know, I wanted to. I played the King's Indian in one of my uh, last tournaments yeah. against Bibisara. Uh, Bibisara, yeah, yeah, okay. And um, I wanted to win the game. I the wow. tournament wasn't going so well, and I wanted to win the game. And I thought it was going to be super aggressive. It was a super close position. Sweet. I ended up... I Which had, line was it? KID? It was an H3 line. H3, okay. Well, how do you play it? With uh, E5, knight e 5 With E5, A5, and knight 6 A5, knight okay. And uh, maybe I wouldn't do it again. You yeah. know, like uh, people, you know, if you want to do that, maybe C5 lines are C5. A, a bit more active. Okay. And I ended up, I had a knight on C5 and a knight on D7. Right. I ended up playing knight a6, a knight right. from d7 to c5. c5. right. And then playing uh, f5. Uh, uh, and then trying to play f5. Yeah. To play f5, yeah. I had to play bishop a8 because she could take en passant and the bishop couldn't be attacked on g7. Jeez. Just so you see, I wanted to attack and right. I ended up having all my pieces, pieces there, to move know? around and then, just to play f5. And then she offered a draw. I declined. 
And then it was a draw in life five move because she did, just did nothing and I had no mm. active plan. That's what tough. I mean is, you know, especially below, below a certain level, yeah. peace activity is really the way to go for active players. You need right. to have your pieces breathe. Right. An example is the tires defense. I'm not yeah, saying yeah. it's the best opener, right. but your pieces are flowing. Very right? active. That's what a Duboff is in it, isn't he? Uh, uh, the Duboff tire works Dubof very well. Really nice, interesting. What's 100%. the critical line there that's rough? I forgot what that is. Uh, 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 There's so a line that like really is a test. Supposedly a test you're to supposed it. to take the pawn uh, on d5, uh, oh, okay. I think. Oh, and then t c takes d4, that line with knight c6. You yeah, yeah. Interesting. But, but, but okay. for me, the main problem with the Duboff off Tarash right. is that it worked with the knights on c3. Oh, so think of knight f3, you have to play something You else. have to play something else. Interesting. Either that a would be Ragozin or, uh, or You semi. get a, a lot of options. You can play the semi Tarash, you can play the Ragozin, which you cannot play against knight c3. Right. Or you can play a conventional Tarash. What is that one? Uh, just play c5, just c5. Just play c5 and do whatever. And then knight f6, bishop e7, castles. Or okay. That's yeah, smooth. I like that. I like the, that a lot. I'm, the, a, I'm actually going to look into that. Chad, I'm going to. We're getting free lessons here right <laughs> now, Chad. Drop his name, gonna send him a Facebook request. Yeah, it's, um, you know what, bro? I, I'm not, I can't even say it, bro. Yes. I can't even, we call him George, but. If you go to the Portuguese rating list, I'm Portuguese, the first one, Portuguese, so. he the highest rated player, the best one in Portugal right now, yeah. chat. So if you go to the Portuguese rating list, what up, what's good? Y'all taking notes, chat? We talking with a GM <laughs> right now. Get your questions in the chat, bro. Get your questions in the chat, for real. This man, but, dropping some knowledge to y'all. But, but that would make a lot of sense, Atar, for you, because you play yeah. the Alapan, you play the Panop, because mm -hmm. that's our game, like you sacrificed a piece. I love it, yeah. And, and so, like, uh, it would make sense conceptually right yeah. and and like also these days with computers we want to really equal equalize with black yeah. and i think it's totally overrated yeah. like, <laughs> so sometimes i'm preparing and the computer wants me to do these all this crazy concrete stuff so i can get a zero 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 and then and the second line it's like a zero sixty and it's super complex and i'm like i'll yeah. go for the second go for the second one, one. yeah yeah i'm uh, a fan like I'm a, a fan of that. Uh, and I feel for my level, it's still per perfectly, perfectly adequate, like yeah. 2500. Right. If you're playing like some 2650 tough guys, maybe you, to you don't want zero. to give them so much freedom. Right. It's not like they're going to kill you as if they were the computer. Right. But those 060 per positions often give a lot of freedom to the side that has the advantage. Wow. You have a lot of like uh, wiggle room, even if the advantage decreases, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, but if you you're playing against weaker players, or you know, if your rating is below like the like master level, like a hundred percent, you shouldn't try to equalize. Okay. Uh, with black, That's good I don't to think. Know, boy. Uh, it, if you have a concept that you like, like imagine that you like these IQP positions with your pieces flowing, and you want to build your repertoire around that, you shouldn't let the fact that a certain critical position is a zero sixty advantage for yeah. black for white, uh, completely ruin your concept of your repertoire, you know? Like, you just live with it, you know? Right. Uh, I like it. How, I for, how important is uh, in-game study? I think I think it's quite important because you have no time when you get to the end game these days. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not like I'm one of these purists that think that, you know, if you study the end game, you'll get the real essence of the chess pieces. And okay. Then, <laughs> but, um, but because you have no time when you get to it, if right. you actually don't know how to draw certain kind of theoretical things, it's a wrap. It's it's gonna be really hard. What's your top five books? T top five books, good question. So uh, the the Agard books. Okay. Th this is kind of a cheat because there's many of them. Agard. I really right? liked. I, 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 yeah. yeah, I should say it. Yeah. I I just bought all of them. Oh, you got all of them. Uh, yeah. All the Grandmaster preparation. I have them all too. Thinking inside the box. I like yeah, thinking inside the box. That was a good one. The first right. Gelfand book. Is okay. really really good. First Position Gelfand, which one is that? Positional decision making in Ooh, chess. I've seen that. Positional. I've never read it though. Uh, I bought the second one too. I liked it less, but the first one I thought it's good. really good stuff about space. Space is a very puzzling topic. I like it a lot. Okay. When I was a uh, younger, I really liked the Silman books. I oh, Jeremy Silman's. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I only knew uh, in game course, right? The in game, game course, course, which I went through. Uh, uh, the and most famous is, and reassess. is how to reassess. Your reassess. Chest. I went through both. But of them. the Amateur's Mind is also really good. Never went through that one. Heard of it. Yeah. Okay. And I just bought recently uh, Thinking Like a Super GM. Oh, from him? He uh, made it? Uh, that's Michael Adams. Oh, and, Michael Adams. Uh, wow. And Philip Hurtado. What does it say in there? I mean, that's a book. <laughs> Thinking it, Like it, a it, Super it, GM? Chad, y'all hear this? Thinking yeah. Like a Super GM? Y'all hear this? It's quality chess. It's really good. Wow. And obviously, Michael Adams is really good. And they, they did this experiment like in the 40s, I think, in the wow. Netherlands. Okay, what, what was the experiment? Where they had like chess positions and they had Alekin. Right. Alekin, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah Alekin. Yeah. You said exactly. Alekin, right? Same thing. Uh -huh. And other masters and then weaker players look at the same position and talk as, you, as, as they were thinking through what move they would play. Right. And these guys basically redid that with modern day players. Wow. Like Julio Granda Zuniga. Okay. 3600s oh, is Oh, that's there. sweet. Eduardo Iturizaga. I know him. Iturizaga, he's nasty. He had a nasty game this Michael year. Michael Adams did okay. all the exercises. And then, 
2,000 rated players, even 1,600 rated players. Right. And then you can see the difference. Like, doing the exercises, excellent. And then you can actually see the difference between uh, the way the 2,000 rated player thinks and the way Michael Adams thinks. Wow, what was the difference? Uh, Bro, this uh, is amazing uh, uh, knowledge like, right now. In the depth of what they see, the even, even where they look at, right. there's a lot of um, mistaken variations that we can players look at that you see that it does, don't even get considered. Wow. What... What get, what your brain considers as tempting yeah. is very different when you, your rating like fl fluctuates. And like, I at least think that in chess we learn a lot by mistakes. One yeah. of my favorite books when I was a kid was How Not to Play Chess. How was, Not to Play Chess. By how Zinesco Not Borowski. to Play Chess, Jack. Get that one. Be because like, sometimes they, they tell you, you know, here's how you play this structure. Yeah. And it's beautiful and you like it and it, it's very nice. But when you see someone really misplay a position, mm -hmm. and then you see how it's supposed to be done, right. it really gets into your you head. You understand, like, wow, I, That's I, what I really think. messed that up. And mm -hmm. this contrast between extremely strong players and the exercises have solutions to, right. and weaker players, I think it's very good. Beautiful. I bought it on forward chess, very yeah, good, really, yeah, for, for the yeah. train. Yeah, I recommend wow. it, yeah. And so uh, English, do you play? Which English do you play? Bafanik English or...? Uh... Uh, well, what do you think of Bobinic English, by the way? I mean, it's a very simple system. You get all the pieces very easy yeah. to the same squares. But. Uh, so there's various versions. So the version with the pawn on e5? Right. Excellent. Okay. Like, uh, really good. Okay. Um, if you want a source on that, the Marin, Marin Michael, yeah. uh, Michael, Mikhail Marin uh -huh. book. Right. The old Grandmaster Repertoire book is absolutely excellent, that chapter. Oh, okay. Um, that's with the pawn on e5. Right. That, that is just recommended. Okay. With the pawn on c5, it's worse. Wow. Um, because the bishop on g7... Both controls d4 directly. And the knight to and support, c6, yeah. Uh, with the knight on c6, and right. the knight on f6 goes to e8, to c7, to e6. And e6, yeah. And the bishop on g7 also helps on the queen side. Yeah. Uh, and so that's worse. Uh, I still play it. I, 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 my last <laughs> I Grandmaster Norm, I won a game, <laughs> game with that. But, but, it, but it's worse. Yeah. Um, and you shouldn't try to do it against everything, I guess is my thing. Uh, you don't go against everything. So, what English, uh, so the other English is c4. Nice C3, you're trying to play D4, right? More Maroxy bind is. I don't do a lot of that. Okay. I, I actually, those are very concrete lines. Interesting. As, you know, when they play Queen B6 and yeah, this kind yeah, yeah. of stuff. That's like, you, you have a lot of like uh, pieces hanging Queen, when yeah, yeah. you play that. The C4 pawn is hanging from mm -hmm. the beginning. And then when we play D4, mm. pawn takes, knight takes. If there's a knight on C6, the knight on D4 is hanging as well. Right. So then you have Queen B6, Queen C5, Sheesh. Bishop C5 attacking F2. And when I That's play the much. English, I yeah. want it more schematic. Yeah. So the, the way I do it, so um, I have a Chess24 premium account, and mm -hmm. they have this old ebook by Christoph oh, Sielek. Oh, that's sweet. Love it. Nobody it, knows. It's... You got some secret files. Yeah. yeah uh, no, one, no one talks about it, really. <laughs> but but, but I, I swear it's really good. It's, Man, got it's, some secret files, boy. It's with C4 and G3 okay. uh, that you always want to do. C4 and G3, yeah. Uh, and just flexible. And, and I was doing it like that. I hope in the future to uh, add some flexibility because yeah. it gets a bit predictable. But uh, I would definitely recommend that. And it's not like, I don't even think he recommends the Botvinnik. Marin does. But like, it's really good too. So with the old Marin books and Cielecki's book, which yeah. I think is like 2017, I think you, you have more than enough to start building your Ooh, repertoire. Excellent. What do you think most aggressive against French and Carol Khan? Those used to be problems for me. Because with of, uh, yeah, with white, right? Playing e4, I love e4, but uh, it's, uh, French is very annoying sometimes. It's very solid. I even looked at the front of black side. Me playing the French, I'm like, yeah, this is hard to crack. Yeah. So uh, more most aggressive, you would say, e4, I mean, uh, French and Cairo. Uh, it's this thing again. Uh, yeah, some, of the, some of the most aggressive lines against the French, for example, right. are closed center lines. Wow. Either you That's do the deep. advance or either you play knight c3 and black forces you to advance. To advance, right. And with your style, I would think that the first thing I would look like at is the exchange variation. Exchange variation of the French? Uh, and the knight f3, and then if you could play c4 next. Wow! Uh, like That's crazy. The concept is the same. You want your pieces to breathe. Active. Yeah, you're right. If it goes Active. well, a bishop is on c4 attacking f7, right. a rook is on e1 in an open and file, then knight is going on e5, yeah. and then you have, yeah. pieces are breathing. Bishop is sense. going on g5. Right. Because if you imagine you play the advance, it's like uh, extremely it's so aggressive. It it's, is. it's so ambitious. Yeah. I want the center. Mm -hmm. You're never gonna have space on the king side. I want to mate you. That's true. On the other hand, your pieces are closed. You're gonna yeah. end up being playing some a3 b4 right. things. Right. Right. I've done to that before. That's why I was never a fan of the advance. But, I was never a fan of that. But your pieces are not breathing. That's why. With that the knight, uh, the knight on c3. Against knight f6 again, I think it's a similar problem. The same thing. Yeah. Uh, e5, uh, and then there's even lines where. Uh, Shoot, now they let the guy play on me. I played bishop g5, actually, instead of e5. He played h6. 
Sacrificing then, the pawn. Yes. Decide, yeah. I ain't never seen that before. Yeah. Lost that game. That was a crazy game. He's an IM now, but it was just a very crazy game. It's not that easy that pawn sacrifice. Man. Bishop G5 was a good choice, by the way. Yeah, I've tried that a lot. Trying not to close. Right. And if they take only for your hand. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. But, uh, but, but you see, like, the, the, the implementation also depends on your ambition, what you want from the opening and, right. and whatnot. But I think conceptually, I think That's you deep, should man. take care That's of your good. pieces. Right. Be because um, like with an, a very active style, if you end up closing the center and doing those slow maneuvering games... It's really hard. Even if, as in the advanced variation, your goal is to mate your opponent, so right. it sounds aggressive, right. some of the position might be stylistically a bit, um, a bit off. And of course, you always have this thing of, like, say that a certain position is not in my style. You right. could always do it pedagogically for yourself. Right. Let me play a position that is not in my style so I can learn. You can right. always think of that way. I've done so that. I'm just trying to answer directly of... You know, given your style, what could yeah. be a thing? That would be the first thing that I would like the exchange. Perfect. And, I like uh, that. And against C six, I would do the pan off. Like pan, uh, oh, that's what I've been doing. Like <laughs> I'm just continuing to do it. Yeah, it's been working for me. You know, like uh, you see this pattern. You, you basically want uh, open pieces and, like you said, activity. Activity. When I get activity, lines. it's a problem. Like it's really good for me yeah. to have activity. I mean, I've, I've done a lot with the agar lines and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's good. So goal wise, let's give us some goals. So your next year, do you have a year goal? Uh, I wonder, Next like, uh, I have two more years of my PhD scholarship, so okay. on, during those years it's going to be hard to play chess. Yeah. But I, my last two tournaments, I, I had a um, 2600-plus performance. Sheesh. Uh, and so I would like, so my peak rating was 2539. I'd like to break 2550. Okay. Which I think is also the um, yeah, Portuguese all-time best deal. So wow. if I could have that. Uh, but, you know. It's there's in the summer I like to play, but there's only so much I can ask. While in, during the year I pay almost no attention. Yeah, like uh, it's even really hard to switch. Mm -hmm. Like in my first tournaments, you know, I have a head full of philosophy for a year, <laughs> and, 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 no, then, and then I'm chess. trying to yeah, hard chess. You know, and of course I play blitz and stuff, yeah. but uh, it's different. Yeah, uh, it's different in the slow game. But uh, I'd like to do twenty five fifty in the next you know year could be good. That's Maybe good. that's too chat. Ambitious. Can we get some energy chat? Wow, twenty five fifty. Josh Rushing Ways can recommend an exchange French. He just recommended it once. Yep, Milner Berry. Wow, look, hey chat, that's crazy. Look, I love it. Kings in the attack for the win. Yeah. So, um, all right. Uh, last question here, bro. Mm -hmm. Um, hold on. What was the uh? I saw a question in here. So question. Um, scroll up. I saw Eric had a question, Eric. I recently picked up Queen's Indian, Knight F6, and B6. I like my chances in attacking the center right away. How does this opening transition to OTB chess? Uh, it, I, I assume he's mentioning the accelerated Queen's Indian. Queen's Knight Indian. F6, B6, yeah, we'll go So with D4, that. Knight F6, C4, B6, B6 immediately. Yeah, that's accelerated, yeah. The problem with that is that you have these lines where white plays D5 and A3. Oh, yeah, that it's pawn stack thing or uh, something, right? So there's some pawn stacks in some lines. Okay. And uh, I played that actually in uh, in the Olympia. Oh, I played that as white. Yeah, yeah. And um, I don't like it that much. Mm. Uh, the the lines that I think Eric must be mm -hmm. having in mind where you attack the center is when black white plays knight c six, and then you play it like a Grunfeld with d five, mm -hmm. and then you play even e five later. Yeah, that looks really good, but. Um, if you want this activity, letting developing a bishop to b7 and, and having it blocked by d5 immediately, and then you have to somehow win a pawn to get like your own play. Yeah. Uh, I am not the biggest fan. Yeah. Um, but like obviously it's playable. Okay. Uh, there's this international master from Spain, uh, Jesus Martin Duque, that always plays yeah. that as black, wow. and he, he has twenty four hundred. He does Dang, perfectly from fine. Twenty four hundred. Yeah. He does per perfectly Jeez. fine. But you know, the, the regular Queen's Indian. The reason it's playable is that there's a knight on f3, it's right. not controlling d5, right. and there's a pawn on e6 that yeah, is exactly. controlling d5. Yeah. There's a line on the regular queen's Indian that is a3. That's mm. crazy that a3 is the main yeah, that's actually It's only insane. because you want to put the knight on c3 to control d5 right. and not have bishop b4 pin your knight. Right. Uh, the, just so the, you see how important is this d5, yeah. whether white can play it or not. Right. And in the accelerated queen's Indian, it, they can play d5, so wow. that's the problem. Yeah. Bro, that's fire. Boy, y'all see this chat? Uh, here it is, the ED, yep. Ask him what is his best game that he likes to show people. Just curious. I will. I will look at it. Yeah, chess lover be looking up games. What's your best game that you can go look up? Like, uh, in my opinion, it's a game against Konstantin Lupulescu from the twenty eighteen. That's a strong GM too, ain't he, uh, Yeah, yeah. Like twenty six forty. Twenty six forty. Sheesh, chat. He not like. Uh, uh, not uh, like. Uh, and uh, it's a very bad opening. I played my English. You played English. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, but, but, but then I think it was a good positional game. It had um, a lot of like interesting positional moments. So I played some A4, A5 okay. as a prophylaxis okay. against him playing some Knight A5. And then I ended up having to calculate in the end to right. actually mate him. COE and, uh, it COE. was a good one. It was a good one. Wow. That's what I usually say is my best game. Dang, boy, that's good. Who's your favorite player? We ended here. Last chat. Last one. Oh, wait. Well, we got one more question. Okay, we'll get some more. All right, just two more. So favorite player, and then we'll get Eric's last uh, question here. It, it used to be Kramnik. Okay, it used um, to be Kramnik. Be a big Kramnik fan. And why? Like, uh, I, I like Kramnik, but it, why? Well, like, like um, I mentioned, I'm kind of a theorist. I like yeah. theories. And right. like when he was to annotate his games or explain them, yeah. it's always a big story. And sometimes it's a bit, you know, you're not quite sure if the story is true. But I like it when people explain things conceptually like that right. or from a right. high level. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so Kramnik used to be my favorite one. I like what about Kiri now? What about today? I like Kiri. Oh, like, Geary these days. Really? Geary? You see that? You like Geary? I like Geary too. Why you like Geary? Like, uh, for an example of what I mean, check out, it's a chess-based India video. Okay. Where he comments a game he played against Amonatov, I think. It mm. was a, it, the title of the video is something like, Geary teaches you how to play the Schweninger. Schweninger. Yeah. Shvening. And uh, so you see him explaining things conceptually and how things work, comparing Concept. stuff. Wow, that's I, I, I really like the, the way he thinks. Wow. I wish he wrote more. Even yeah. Kramnik, with new in chess annotations yeah. and books and stuff, wrote more than, than Giri. But uh, he'll you do like it. Giri. That's fire, bro. I'll see this chat. All right, last question, chat. No more questions after this. What is your thought process when you consider a move in the middle game? Ooh, that's the That's a good one to end on. Of course, it depends. Like, one thing I think is very important. Like, the most important thing is to know whether you're going to have to think fast or think slow. Okay. If you're going to have to calculate. If you have to calculate, at least for me, I'm not a natural calculator. I'm right. an intuitive player and, you know, yeah. I like theories and stuff. Yeah. And if I, if I think I have to calculate, it's really, I, every, I'm shutting everything down. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I don't want to listen to any noise. And then I need to slow your thought process. And calculate. Think how many candidate moves you have. Think exactly. If you see a sequence of captures... Mm -hmm. Every move you need to look at it anew mm. because your head just wants to see the, sequ the whole sequence the whole go sequence, as yeah. if it's a chunk, you know, right. and you need to slow it down move by move. Yeah. And so like the chunks uh, have this chunks. is a very general answer to a general question, but I right. think first you identify whether you're going to have to calculate and thinking slow. Okay. And if you do, you're going to have to uh, do this kind of discipline that you can only get by doing those studies and exercises yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Wow, you see that chat? COE, right? Calculation, chat. <laughs> Calculation, Eric, okay, in chess lover, and yeah, uh, not, awesome. Not, not to be confused with tactics, if I not to be may, confused with tactics. Fire. If, I, if I may make a distinction that I like, a oh, lot. yeah, for sure. Because they, they like, love to hear that. A, a lot of people think that to study to improve calculation, a calculation is just you need tactics. to do tactics, right? But actually, it's completely different. Ooh, Tactic, yeah, I heard it. Tactics, you're supposed to do it fast, right? You're, it's supposed to be. Either you have the pattern in your head and yeah. you want to do it like this, yeah. I know the tactic, pattern. or you want the pattern to get inside. Right. So you suffer and then you see the solution and then you right. go, ah, and then you repeat. And right. While calculation is not like that at all. It's not about your intuition. Yeah. It's, like, it's precisely working against your intuition. Wow. So if you, if you want to improve at calculation, often they recommend that you do studies. Yeah. One reason studies are good, positions are weird as hell. Yeah. That's, a, that's, <laughs> that's a feature, not a bug, because yeah. you don't have your intuition to help you. Yeah. So you really have to turn it off and then wow. see the pieces moving you know Dang. yeah so that uh, the, it's important to keep in mind that calculation and tactics are not the same yeah boy that's deep that's deep chat he said you should stream guys should stream ha <laughs> you should stream absolutely what does he think of bullet what do you think of bullet chat like uh, uh, um I, I once played a bit of Bullet yeah, yeah. Uh, on Lee Chess just because I was annoyed this other Portuguese guy Andres Souza, which is one of my best friends uh, had a high yeah. rating and I wanted to have a higher rating than yeah. but, but, uh, and I did but, but, but my, my head was so weird like for uh, I, I have nothing against it yeah. but just my head was like working weird for a while so wow. I get like somehow it's like a bit faster too fast paced for me yeah you know like i, I got into american sports and, okay and the nba is super fast for me yeah I, I i saw videos explaining the strategies and stuff yeah and it goes super fast while yeah. the nfl it's is slower. much slower and right. i can understand it and yeah like. so I, I i usually go for uh three minutes uh, games okay instead of the, and and I think there must be something to not playing bullet if you have a classical tournament. Yeah. Because it messes yeah. with your head like you a little fast, bit. fast, exactly. Even blitz blitz messes with your yeah, head. I hear that this is a GM talking to y'all, right? Blitz and bullet mess with your head. Okay. Just because you think you can turn it off. Yeah. Don't exactly. mean you can. C can I say another thing about Absolutely. Blitz? Say whatever, bro. They're just, listening. Just very quickly because 
one thing I saw my I was doing myself is I was trying op trying out openings in Blitz. Yeah, yeah. And then you get feedback from your games, and there's these statistics, and you look at them and whatnot, and then you make inferences from what's going on in your Blitz games to yeah. what you should do in Classic. Yeah. And I think it's very dangerous Ooh, because in Blitz sheesh. there's a lot of interference. I <laughs> see Ali Reza, <laughs> <laughs> Ali Reza, the candidate is playing 100, 200 Blitz games or before, and then losing a game in the next morning. Uh, but but but, but also those guys, yeah. they're they're so involved in chess yeah. their mind is so well adapted to thinking about chess that they right. might be able to do it right i don't think mine is like that yeah, i think yeah. most people's isn't right and so like when you're playing this competitive in my environment like bullet games and you yeah. want to raise your rating and stuff you right. adapt your thought process adapts to the bullet thing right. and we might not be so good at this chess thing that we can adapt back to the slow thing interesting so even if he can do it it's unclear if people can, can do it yeah. But I was saying to be careful of these inferences. Like, just because an opening doesn't work well for Blitz, mm -hmm. doesn't mean it won't work well in Classic. Ooh, so, for example, I'm good. very slow when it comes to, like, 10 seconds each. Yeah. And I always play 3 plus 0 because I don't like increments online. Yeah, I don't like and so I lose a lot of games there. Right. And so, openings that are successful for me tend to mm. be openings where the game gets decided at, like, move 30. Yeah. So quite aggressive openings. Wow. So the game gets decided, I get to play better than the other guy, I right. win before I get zero seconds. Right, right. right. Uh, but in stall chess, that's not a factor at all. I can exactly. win end games, like I, I'm mostly a positional player. Right. So I, I figured out that, you know, my statistics online were skewered towards openings that would decide the game faster. Wow. That's a concrete example. But be careful of these inferences, like uh, from your results online to your results over the board. Yeah. Boy, chat, y'all getting this chat? I hope y'all got this chat. I hope y'all got this. This is amazing, right? Look, we're getting the knowledge over here, baby. <laughs> he getting a free lesson, just sitting in the back, baby. You know what I'm saying? Getting that free lesson. Well, that's enough for the day. They enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. That was amazing, chat. We're going to keep streaming, but look, we're going to let them, let him go. You know, that was free knowledge, nice to meet bro. You. Nice nice, to meet you. Yeah, nice. Hey, chat, make y'all say bye to him, man. Chat, can we get some, some energy? Thank you for that. Chaz, yeah, y'all see that, Chaz? Right. What openings would you say yes for an intermediate player? All right, Joshua. You know what? We'll help you out with that one, Joshua. You can do any opening, really. <laughs> All right, chess lover. Thank you, sis. Thank you, chess lover. All right, George, so good to have you, you, bro. Thank Very you. nice to meet you. Very nice Very to nice meet you, man, for sure. I learned a lot, man. I'm hype. I'm hype, chat. I'm about to win every game. <laughs> I'm about to win every game, chat. I'm <laughs> so hype right now, right? It just got me hype, bro. Yeah, that's cold. That's cold. Dopeness. All right, chat. I got to get off the Wi Fi. I'm about to go back to the uh, to the, uh, the room, to the room, and then get ready for tomorrow. So, peace Bye, out. Bye, everyone. Bye. All right. I'll Peace see you out. Guys. All right, chat. Look, I'm going to see y'all in like 10 minutes. Peace. <laughs>